stories unite us. Stories excite and inspire us. And sometimes stories can heal us. Imagine having the solution to a problem that plagues thousands or maybe even millions. But when you try to explain your idea to others, you can tell they don't understand you and they have a confused look on their faces. Recently, I was the one with the confused look on my face. I signed up for a college class to learn the art of documentary filmmaking. But imagine my surprise when one of the students got up and introduced herself as Chloe, the environmental economist. Like what? That has nothing to do with documentary filmmaking. And I had questions. I mean, why hadn't she decided to become I don't know, a heart surgeon? Then another student got up and introduced themselves. And I suddenly realized that all of these students were PhD candidates, and they were given the synopses of their scientific research projects. Obviously, I was in the wrong place. I didn't have a research project. And I must admit, I felt a little intimidated because they were all using technical jargon that didn't sound like English to me. I was experiencing imposter syndrome. Now, when it was my turn to introduce myself, I got up and I said, you are all PhDs but I'm a PHO. And it was their turn to look confused until I explained that a PHO was not some new academic designation, but something I had simply made up on the spot because I'm a wedding photographer. Yes, I got that same kind of embarrassed chuckle. As my attempt to fit in using humor fell flat. And I sat down and I was embarrassed. And another student got up, and then another and another. And I remember feeling so frustrated that I raised my hand to let the professor know that I needed to leave. I wanted to drop the class. But she was a scientist herself, and she was fascinated by what everybody was saying. And she said, CC, wait until the end of class to ask your questions. And I was like, I don't have any questions. I just want to leave. <laughs> I needed them to slow down. I needed them to explain their ideas in plain, simple language, something that I can understand. Because while I knew their ideas were brilliant, as a layperson, I did not know what to do with that information. At the end of class that day, I had a heart-to-heart -heart with the professor. And I told her, I don't belong here. And she suggested something totally unexpected. She said, Cece, why don't you stay in the class and use your photography skills to help the other students? I was like, what? She said, yes, for help them find that one picture that will go along with their presentation that will really connect them to their audience. Like, Me? I can do that as a wedding photographer amongst all these PhD candidates? I kind of liked that idea. I kind of felt like by doing something simple, something that came naturally to me, I could suddenly fit in with these other students. I could be a part of something bigger than myself. Yes, I got excited about that idea. 
And then I thought, hmm, while a picture may be worth a thousand words, how could these scientists quickly explain their research projects to any size audience, whether big or small? Suppose they were in an elevator. Suppose PowerPoint was not an option. Ah, they could tell a story. Yes, because stories are more than just the retelling of a sequence of events. Stories have the ability to grip us and pull us in and make us feel things that we had forgotten how to feel. These scientists needed a story. Yes, they did. Wow. I felt empowered. I felt like I could belong. And people might even mistake me for a PhD candidate, but that's a whole other thing. So I went back to Chloe, the environmental economist, and I told her about my hypotheses. Instead of using pictures, how about we started adding stories? And she thought, like, hmm, okay, your idea has some merit. And over the next few weeks, we spent time together researching the backstory of her presentation. And we came up with the perfect story. That day, when Chloe stood to give her final presentation, as she stepped onto the podium and looked out to the audience, and in a crystal clear voice, she said, my name is Chloe, and I am from Kentucky, where there are no beaches. In 2018, my cousin, and his new bride decided to go to Florida for their 10-day honeymoon because they had seen the pictures of the crystal clear waters and the pristine white beaches, and they thought it would be a perfect honeymoon. But when they got to Florida on a Wednesday afternoon and looked out towards the beach, it was empty. They decided to take a walk to the beach. And as they walked, they saw piles of dead fish. And there was a foul odor. Two days later, they ended up leaving and going back to Kentucky because the beaches weren't white. In fact, the water was red. And what we did not know at the time is that Florida was experiencing red tide. This was something that love could not conquer, a ruined honeymoon. Red tide is caused by microscopic algae that infest the waters and kill the marine life. It pollutes the air it causes asthma, itchy skin, and watery eyes. The effects on the economy are devastating as businesses close. And in a 2018 University of Florida survey, they found out that that particular episode of red tide cost the state of Florida $317 million dollars, over 2,900 jobs were lost, and it lasted for 18 months. Because Chloe had added one story, the story of Red Tide to her research project, I now understood the financial impact that a natural disaster can have on an economy. But more so, I felt empowered because Chloe gave three simple tips that we can do 
to help prevent natural disasters like this. Number one, we can pick up our pet's waste. Because if the waste is left on the ground, the bacteria soaks into the soil and ends up in the ocean. Number two, if you fertilize your lawns during the rainy season, don't. The fertilizers drain off and end up in the ocean. Number three, repair your septic tanks because leaks from the septic tanks go into the drainage system and guess what? End up in the ocean. Three simple things that Chloe said that I now felt that I could do and I could share with my friends and family. I felt good. I felt like I could help heal the planet, the oceans. So right about now, somebody way in the back, they're going like, Cece, I'm not a scientist. I don't live in Florida, and so red tide does not affect me. I'll be like, OK, but you're missing the point. Chloe had used a story about a couple on their honeymoon to inspire us in our outrage to pick up our dog's poop in order to save the ocean. Wow. I felt inspired. I felt good. So in answer to the question that you are not a scientist, here's my two points to you. From now on, when you see somebody not picking up after their dog, you'll be forever thinking piles of dead fish on the beach. And secondly, and more importantly, you will realize that anybody can tell a story. You have a story that will inspire others and help others to do incredible things. Because teachers, need stories to inspire their students to learn. Doctors need stories to get their patients excited about living healthier lifestyles. And let's face it, even politicians need stories to help unite the country. Because every industry from babysitting to baseball can use stories to connect with their audience, to provide a service, or sell a product. We all need stories. You have a story that will help others. Somebody else is back there asking like, OK, CC, so you've told us we need stories. How do we tell a story? I'm so glad you asked. There are many great techniques that you can use to tell a story. But here are my three favorite ones. Number one, one central idea. Number two, use concrete examples. Think piles of dead fish. And number three, this is my favorite favorite, slow down. Use the power of the pause because your listeners need a chance to process and understand what you are saying because you have brilliant ideas. So the next time you have the solution to a problem that plagues thousands or maybe even millions, share it as a story. Because from birth, we are hardwired to hear stories because stories explain the world around us. Stories unite us. Stories excite and inspire us. And sometimes, stories can heal us.